All right, so our goal for today now is to learn how to write a chemical formula, so using symbols, when two elements come together. So we're going to be just looking at what we call simple ionic compounds, so compounds that result of one atom being positive and the other being negative, or one element being positive and the other one being negative, because we don't always deal with just two atoms coming together. All right, in this case here, we have potassium. We did this before where it had one valence electron. It wanted to lose that electron. Chlorine had seven valence electrons. It wanted to gain. And we said that going through and drawing out the Bohr-Rutherford diagram, which we're very good at now, works. But it would be a little bit easier to go through and do the Lewis dot diagram. So I can fit this in underneath. Potassium has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and therefore wants to gain one, and so we can see the same thing with just sending that over. And now we're going to get potassium, which lost an electron, so lost one of the positives. So it's going to become positive, and chlorine going to be negative one. So it takes one positive uh, potassium and one chlorine to form one ion of potassium chloride. And so the formula for that is going to be KCl, really K1Cl1, but we don't need to put the ones in there. So we'll say KCl. Now is there an easier way to go through and do this? Because things get a little bit more complicated when we have something like beryllium and nitrogen. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so beryllium, we can look at our periodic table and see that it's in group two, and therefore has two valence electrons. Nitrogen, like we saw before, is in group five, and therefore it wants to have five valence electrons. Or rather, we should say that it's in group VA, so therefore it has five valence electrons. We're always looking at the Roman numeral. So, what does it want, each one want to do? Beryllium wants to lose these two electrons rather than get six more. Nitrogen would like to gain three more rather than lose those five. So it wants to gain three, lose two. So like we saw before, it sends one over, sends another one over. Beryllium's happy, nitrogen's not. Nitrogen still wants one more, so beryllium calls a friend, and the beryllium comes in, sends one over, and now the nitrogen's happy but this beryllium is not. So we need another nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five. It sends one over. Now the nitrogen is not happy still, but this beryllium is. So we call up another beryllium. One, two, sends one over. It's happy now once it gets the second electron. So this one's gotten rid of its two. This has got three. This one's gained three, got rid of two. So everybody's happy. So what's our formula going to be? Well, I have one, two, three beryllium's, two nitrogen's. Now that's not bad. It's a lot better than going through and drawing the bohr rutherford diagrams. But is there an easier way? And the answer is yes. Here's what we do. You want to write down the symbol for each element. Then you're going to look and determine what the charge is going to be. So in order to do that, you need to look at the number of valence electrons. Now you don't want the number of valence electrons. You want the charge. So beryllium has two valence electrons. I know that because it's in group IIA. So I'm going to write plus two. Nitrogen, it is in group VA. So it has five valence electrons. Therefore, it wants to gain three. So I'm not going to write down the five. I'm going to write down the three. So it's going to be minus three. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to ignore the charges. I don't care if it's positive or negative. I just am interested in the numbers. What I do is I'm going to take this two and this three, and we're going to do what we call the crisscross method. I'm going to take the two, and I'm going to bring it down here beside the nitrogen. Take the three, bring it down beside beryllium. So I get VE3 and two. And lo and behold, we have the exact same thing that we just did here. And while this was easier than the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, this is quicker and easier and will get you the right answer faster.
Okay, let's do a couple more examples. So let's say we have calcium and fluorine. We want to see how they're going to combine and what sort of chemical formula they're going to end up with. So what do I do? Well, I write down the symbols. Ca, F. Then I go to the periodic table and I look. Calcium, look up to the top of the column. It's in column two. IIA, so it's two. So I have a charge of plus two. Fluorine, I look, it's all the way over in column 17. It has, I look up and it says VII. So it has seven valence electrons. What does it want to do? Well, it wants to gain one more. So it's going to be minus one. Again, you want the charges, not the number of valence electrons. What do we do now? Well, we ignore the charges and we crisscross. The two comes down, the one comes down. CA, I don't need to put the one in there. F2. And there we go. Aluminum and oxygen. Write down the symbols. Al, O. I look. Aluminum up the top of the column. I, I, I. Roman numeral for three. It has three valence electrons. It wants to lose all of those three valence electrons to become plus three. Oxygen. I look up at the top of the column. It's column six. Therefore, it has six valence electrons and wants to lose those two, or gain, sorry, two more electrons, because it wants to get to eight, so six gaining two to get to eight, it's gonna be minus two. We crisscross now, three coming down, the two coming down, and we end up with Al2O3. One more example. Now, magnesium and sulfur. I write down the charge symbols, Mg, S, now I look for the charges, magnesium, I look up to the top, Roman numerals two, therefore has two valence electrons, it wants to lose those two, becomes plus two. Sulfur has six valence electrons because I look up, VI, six valence electrons, wants to gain two more to get to eight, it's going to be minus two. I crisscross, okay? Crisscross, the two comes down, the two comes down. And we'd end up with Mg2S2. Now there's a problem here, okay? Let's take a look at this. If I were to draw this one out, and have magnesium, and do the Lewis dot diagram, we'd have two valence electrons. Sulfur would have one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So what would happen normally, magnesium would say, hey listen, I'd love to get rid of one, I will send one over to sulfur. Sulfur's happy about that, still wants to lose one more, sulfur wants to gain one more, and magnesium's got rid of both of its electrons, sulfur's gained both of the electrons it wanted to get. So if I wrote up the formula, I would end up with just MgS, which is different than what we had over here, because I have Mg2S2. Anytime we have the same number, we're going to do what we call reducing. So what we do is we're going to take a 2 out of both of these. So we end up with MgS. This would also happen if we had a 3 and a 3. It would also happen if it was something like um, Mg2, actually let's say Mg4, C2, in which case I would reduce this one down to become Mg2C. So I can take a 2 out of this and 2 out of that. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 2 once. Okay? So you've got to watch for reducing. I think we're going to be good at these skills. This is the one thing to watch out for. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do we come up with the names for simple ionic compounds. So this is the type of question where you've been given the formula, but you want to come up with the name of the compound. And this is actually something we've done in grade 9 before, and you were probably pretty good at, because it's not that tricky. Here's what we need to do. I look, and I say, what are the elements involved? I've got lithium, and I've got chlorine. So what do I do? I write the name of the metal first. Lithium. I'm going to capitalize this. And then I'm going to write the name of the non-metal second. I'm going to write it in lowercase. But the one thing we're going to do different is we're going to change the ending. We're going to change the ending to ide, I-D-E. So this one's going to become chloride instead of chlorine. Aluminum and oxygen. Well, I write down the name of the metal first. Aluminum. And then oxygen. We're going to change that. We're going to add I-D-E. Add that the right way. It's going to be oxide. And then lastly, magnesium and nitrogen. I'm going to change it. It's going to be 
magnesium. Again, we don't change the name of the metal. All we do is change the name of the non-metal. So nitrogen is going to become nitride. The hardest thing about this sometimes is trying to figure out how to slap on that IDE the right way. 